has changed the face of retail through its bold supply chain management strategies and the deployment of innovative technologies. To begin with, what is a supply chain? A supply chain is a network of activities involved in delivering a product from the manufacturer to the customer. Supply chain management intersects to provide efficient coordination of the operations. SCM relies heavily on operations management and the transparency of information throughout the organization to provide an efficient process. There are four main goals of Amazon supply chain management. The primary goal is to increase efficiency. As one of the largest e-commerce retailer, Amazon carries a variety of supply chains in the different industry. A well-management supply chain will increase efficiency and reduce the chance of making mistakes and reduce costs. Secondly, it can optimize transportation and logistics. It is also an example of increased efficiency. What's more, supply chain management can increase customer satisfaction. For example, as an online retailer, the shipping speed is highly correlated with customer satisfaction. In order to maintain this high customer satisfaction, Amazon launched a service called Amazon Prime, which is super fast shipping service. The last goal is cost reduction. A well-managed supply chain will reduce cost significantly. Amazon offers three main network distributions throughout the use of their supply chain. We have standard shipping, same-day shipping, and Prime Now. We will be focusing on Prime Now shipping, which is Amazon's newest and most innovative practice yet. With Prime Now shipping, first the order is placed, it is then sent from a city storefront through crowdsourced delivery, and the customer has it within hours. This has allowed Amazon to break off and distinguish themselves as a leader in the supply chain management. While becoming one of the most innovative and successful supply chain management systems in the world, Amazon has incurred some benefits along the way. First off, we have automation. As of today, Amazon employs over 40,000 different robots and a countless number of drones that aid at every step along the way in the supply chain. This has allowed Amazon to automate countless processes and basically reduce costs and improve efficiency across the board. Second, we have last mile logistics. Whereas many companies fail with this idea where they incur high costs and they cannot do it efficiently, Amazon has perfected it. By placing many distribution centers in large cities and metropolitan areas, Amazon is able to get around the problem of last mile logistics by getting the product to the end consumer very efficiently, very effectively, and by reducing a lot of the costs, which leads us to our third point, reduction in costs. With the points mentioned above, Amazon has been able to reduce costs across the board and basically save wherever possible. This has led Amazon, in large part, to becoming the first company in history to earn $100 billion in sales revenue. Lastly, and arguably most important, is high customer satisfaction. By allowing Amazon to have control at every step of the way along the supply chain, they have staff working 24-7, which aid in the high customer satisfaction, so if at any point in the, pro in the supply chain there is a problem, Amazon is able to address it quickly and efficiently. Next, I will introduce some problems in supply chain management. The biggest challenge is really to the cost. In order to maintain the high customer satisfaction and competitive advantage, Amazon launched the Amazon Prime in 2016. It has net loss almost $5 billion in that year. The second problem is the shortage of trunk and pallet. Because of this shortage, it linked to the high cost of logistics. And the last problem is inefficiency in process. For example, if the supplier shifts the group late, so it definitely will affect the whole supply chain and maybe cause some delay issue. Amazon is known as being an innovative leader in the e-commerce industry, and here we highlight three reasons why. First of all, they utilize a consumer-centric approach. This strategy strives on a a positive relationship between the consumer and the company. When implementing new ideas, they utilize EDI electronic data interchange to collect consumer values and implement strategies based on these values. The risk of this strategy is decreased through the trust the company has in the consumer. Second of all, in 2005, Amazon adopted Amazon Flex, the Uber of deliveries. 
This allows a courier at the touch of a button to sign up and choose his own delivery times. Amazon Flex is used for Prime Now deliveries to allow instantaneous product arrivals. Prime Air, the future delivery system of Amazon and the first of its kind. Prime Air utilizes fully autonomous drones that need no human supervision. In 2018, the first trial run was conducted, which was successful. When up and running, this will allow Amazon to de make deliveries within 30 minutes or less. This hopefully will increase customer satisfaction and will allow safer transportation throughout all of Amazon. So one of the biggest challenges for Amazon today is around products and, and what's in stock and what isn't. So as a customer, you might think a lot of the time when you go on Amazon, all the products you're looking for are in stock, you order something regularly, you might find it's always available. But in reality, we still do have an issue where a lot of the time products are seasonal, um, we have distributors that aren't meeting commitments, and we do have products that are going out of stock. So there's certain strategies we can implement at Amazon, um, and we need to continue to do so and improve with these strategies. So what we can actually do is reduce traffic to those products. So if we know a product is going out of stock, if it's a, a down season, um, if we're having issues with the supplier, or if any number of issues, it just the end result is we don't have stock of that product. What we can do is we can limit traffic to the website. So we have a lot of pay-per-click advertising. If as a customer you're on a website, you're reviewing, okay, what's the best kind of vacuum cleaner? Um, you'll see the ranking of vacuum cleaners and then you'll click, okay, see the price on Amazon. So all of that's pay-per-click ads. So customers go on, they click, they get to the product. So what we can actually do is limit those pay-per-click ads to limit the traffic to the website. So another key thing we can do to limit the traffic to those products is to just limit marketing campaigns altogether. So we have a lot of marketing campaigns with third parties where we have suppliers um, you know, and, and other vendors doing campaigns that link to the Amazon website. So we can just limit those advertising campaigns and then target those for when the products will be back in stock. Another key thing we can do and we're exploring more of doing in the future is actually changing how we price the products based on availability. So if a product's going low in stock, what we can actually do is limit the price. Um, we can change the pricing rather. So if a product is going to be going out of stock, let's say we have 100 units left of something, we can actually increase the price modestly for customers and that'll decrease demand artificially so that those customers will see a slightly higher price, be less inclined to purchase it, and that'll naturally reduce um, the amount of traffic and the amount of purchases. And then once we get the product back in stock, we go back to the original pricing and then we'll see more traffic back to that product. So, so another area that, that Amazon's really focusing on and it's gonna be pivotal for us to win future business and to improve is to improve our ability to adapt to regulatory changes. So as we go into different markets, as we expand our operations and our shipping capabilities in new countries and new territories, what we're finding is in this digital age that we're in is consumer protection laws, labor laws, um, and, and all of the local regulations that Amazon works within are rapidly changing at a rate we've never seen before. So Amazon is building up their capabilities internally to be able to adapt to legislation as soon as it comes out and limit those impacts to our business model. So we're often seeing um, legislation come that might impact our labor force. So that might drive up shipping costs in a certain region and we may actually have to, to move um, locations so that we can take advantage of more favorable legislation around labor laws. So we might have a you know, massive distribution center in one city, and we actually have to move it um, across to another city because it's across state lines um, or provinces in Canada, and then take advantage of more favorable legislation that has a, a much better impact on our business model. So it doesn't only impact labor laws, it also impacts consumer protection, how we advertise, um, and then you know, even to the degree of things like carbon taxes or environmental laws, that would have a large impact on all of our shipping capabilities. So we're staying very vigilant to all of the legislation um, and we're adapting to that and looking at fundamentally how it changes business cases, how it changes um, our shipping operations 
um, and making sure that we're flexible and adaptable. So, that, so that's a huge thing for us uh, going forward. So another significant improvement we're working on in Amazon is the integration of robotics into our warehouse management. So in 2012, we purchased a company called Kiva Systems and rebranded to Amazon Robotics in 2015. So over the last several years, we've been building up the capabilities of these robots in our warehouses to pick packages without human interaction. So every, every year in the past three years, we've increased the number of robots at our Amazon warehouses by 15,000 units. So we're growing at a rapid rate and we're looking to reduce human interaction in warehouse activities as much as possible. Where we're actually at the point in some products, in some warehouses, we can actually go from end to end from a customer order to fulfilling that order and then leaving the warehouse without any in human interaction. So that's gonna be a huge, huge fundamental change going forward is a significant reduction in the staff costs and the need to you know, keep a workforce in our warehouses as we implement further robotics technology. And it is rapidly evolving. It's not something where we're deploying robots and the technology is not changing. It's changing every year. You know, there's deployments every month. Um, the technology is, is really sophisticated. So robots are being developed. Um, and as we continue to integrate them into our supply chain further, we expect this is going to be a massive, massive change um, fundamentally to how Amazon delivers packages, but also in warehouse management.